So this is kind of an applied graphing calculator review. What we're going to do is work on sort of an engineering problem. So I've got this grid here, which represents uh, a sheet of paper or some material. And what I want to do is I want to cut off a little piece off the corner here or here, you know, on all four corners. And then once I cut off the corners, I can bend this up into a box, a box with an open lid. Now, depending on how big you make that cut, you know, if you cut off, say, just one little piece or two or three or so, you can get um, various size boxes. And the goal would be to try and figure out, well, what way can I make this box the biggest? How can I do that? So that's a good question here. And I've given you several several of you some boxes. So as you were sitting here, you can try and figure out the volume of that box and the volume of your box. Well, let's see you figure out the volume of this box in general. So this box is 18 squares wide. Each square is a half inch, but we're not going to worry about the inches and the units here. 18 squares wide by 14 squares high. So let's figure out the volume here. So the volume of that box, call it V of X. Well, how do you find the volume of any box? Length times width times height. You know, speaking of that kind of stuff here, let me just double check that uh, we're actually recording right now. Yes, good, we have some sound. Whew. So length times width times height. Length times width times height. So, okay, there's a couple dimensions here for us. Our length, well, let's call it, call this uh, our, our width, or no, this will be our length. So this is going to be 14 minus whatever it is we cut off, right? But we're cutting it off on both sides. So the length of there is going to be 14 minus 2x. Now, if this is 18 across for the width, when I make my cuts here for X, you know, cut off that little bit of material so I can fold it up, what's going to be our width? 18 minus 2X. And then the height is going to be however much material I cut off, so that's going to be X. So, okay. Let's take a look at a few things regarding this function. Now, our, our overall goal is to figure out, well, how big of a cut we should make to maximize the volume of this box. And we can use this example to review a few things. First of all, let's plug that into our graphing calculator, into y equals uh, the equation editor menu. So hit the y equals key, and if there's anything there, just clear it out. So it's going to be left parenthesis, 14 minus 2x, right parenthesis, then left parenthesis. You don't need to hit the times. Your graphing calculator understands that there's a multiplication between those, and then an x. So that's our function. Now I want to see what happens when we cut off various sizes. Now some of you have given a little box like this, cut to various sizes. So see if you can't calculate the volume of your open air box, and we'll compare it to what we get. Now we made integer cuts. You don't have to do it a nice integer, but you can. As a reminder, if we're going to do a table, you want to make sure your table is set up correctly. So hit the second button, then the window key. That's your table set up. The important thing that you need from this is that independent should be set to ask. Now, does anyone remember earlier this semester I said, set it to ask, how long do we leave it here at ask? For the rest of your life, all right? All right, forever, right? So leave it there. And once you have this set, we can forget it. Hit second key, then the graph key. If there's some numbers there, we'll just delete those with the delete key. And let's see what the size is if we make various cuts to our box. If I make a cut of one, one unit and fold it in, the volume of my box 
is going to be 192 cubic units. Now, did anyone have one that we cut off two units or three units? Can you guys work on yours? So two units. If you cut off two units and then fold it up, then the bottom of your box is 280 cubic units. So it's bigger. Now let's keep going. Three, four, five, six. Now six, you're cutting off a lot of material. You're getting a very tall box, but it's really skinny is what's happening. Now remember, this was 14 units long. This way, if I type in a seven, can anyone explain why you get a zero there? That's too skinny. Basically, if you cut in a distance of six here and a six here, you get something skinny. But if you cut seven, you're going all the way to the center line. You're cut from the right and you're cut from the left meet. So you cut off all the material at that point. So, okay. Where does it look like our maximum is? Where, what, what, what area should you make your cut? Yeah, it looks like three. But it might be someplace between two and three or between three and four. We just don't know. So here's what we can do. Let's take a look at it graphically. And before we set up, before you hit the graph key, let's think about the window that we're going to set up. So along the x-axis, I'm going to set it up between, say, 0 and 7. Why 0? Well, because if I made a cut of size 0, well, I'm not going to get any volume. I, I can't fold it up if I don't at least cut a little bit of material off. So my window on the x-axis is going to be between 0 and 7. On the y-axis, how high do I need to go up on the y-axis? Certainly I'll go down to 0, but up to what? Yeah, 300 sounds like a good one. All right, you want to leave yourself a little extra room in case it goes higher than the 288. So we'll go to 300 on the y-axis. Now, if I had 300 as my y-max and y-scale was 1, then my graphing calculator would try and force in 300 tick marks on the y-axis. It'd get a little bit busy there. So let's think of something a little bit bigger than 1. What else could I put here for Y scale? 50? Yeah, a couple people are saying 50. I like 50. So now there's just going to be six tick marks up and down the Y axis, and that's fine. When you're ready, hit the graph key, and you should see a graph of our function. Now what we're interested in finding is the value of x that actually maximizes this graph. Where where should I make my cut? If I was doing this for some kind of production facility, I wanted to really maximize this, where should I make my cut? Well, I want to find the maximum, and it might not be exactly at an integer value. So hit the second key. Second key, then the trace key to take us to the calculate menu. What is it that you think I'm going to look at here? maximum. So choose number four. Your calculator is going to want a left bound and a right bound. So I need something to the left of this point and to the right of this point, my, ma my maximums. You can do it with a trace key. You can trace over, you know, use the left arrow and get to the left of your maximum and then press enter and then use the arrow to get to the right of it. But you don't have to necessarily just use the arrow. You can also type in the number. So like 1, 2, 3, 4. If I just press the number 4 and then press Enter, it puts my right bound there. So it might be faster to type in numbers than to use the little arrow key. Last but not least is asking me for an initial guess. This is because your calculator was programmed by a numerical analyst, and they want something closer to this to make it easier on the calculator. You don't have to make it easy on the calculator. Just press the Enter key. It should give you the maximum at about 2.60488, etc. So, you guys able to get that? All right. Now, when you take your calculus class, um, 
you'll find out that I think that's 16 plus the square root of 67 over 3. All right, but we don't have to worry about that. Um, what you should worry about is being able to graph, um, being able to find minimums and maximums, and use the table. So those are the important things that you should get out of this. Yes, sir. I could. <laughs> is there anything wrong with it? No. All right. No. Um, uh, the the part that I wouldn't put on the exam is, you know, creating this function. I mean, that's a little bit um, more involved than I would want to do on a function. Although I hope you followed along with what I did. But you should be able to take this polynomial. If I gave you v of x, you should be able to do everything with it that we did. Use a table, find a graph, find a maximum or minimum, depending on the function. So, anything on this before I uh, call it a day on this uh, kind of review example for your graphing calculator? Looking good? All right, was that helpful? All right, well done, well done. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm so grateful.